Hello, hello. Welcome back to our live series. So today we are going to be talking about when and what working with one looks like. My guest today is Carrie from Uproar Coaching. How are you? Hi! I'm so excited to have you here with us. So I'm tell excited us to be here. Hello, my friend. This little ring light just gives me the blues. So I'm just going to rely on natural light and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> You are brave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. It's so funny. Your pink hair looks like the little live box. And I just love that you're owning your brand. And so is Instagram. I know Instagram's like, hey, we match. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about going purple next. Don't tell anyone. Uh, but that's. Mm -hmm. That's on the plan. I've done, I've done teal, I've done blue, and I've done pink. So I think purple's next. Like, well, I, I'm I a big it. fan of the purple. And I know you said don't tell anyone, but I think you just told like a whole bunch of people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's all right. It's like it's in the family, so it's fine. Yeah, it's just it's just our Instagram family. Like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Monica. Oh, thank you, Monica. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, honestly, there was a time to be a unicorn. It's now. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm excited to talk about, you know, when you're ready to hire a business coach and what working with one looks like. So tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Hi. So thank you. I'm Carrie Ginsberg and I'm the owner and founder, founder and owner of Uproar Coaching. Um, I coach women and femme entrepreneurs who want to spread out, get loud and live a boss bitch life. Um, I was coaching as a side hustle for uh, for a number of years, but uh, like so many people, the pandemic allowed me to reevaluate my priorities and really determine what I wanted out of life and wanted what I wanted my relationship between work and life to be and how they would be integrated. And so, uh, uproar is a pandemic baby, um, but it has been. Uh, it has been a wild year of allowing something that I was passionate about doing on the side to become the thing that I'm doing now and, and bringing impact to so many more women, um, so many more people. It's, it's pretty rad. It's quite a privilege. Um, wait, what was the second part of your question? <laughs> Tell us about what you do. Yeah, so so I'm a coach. I'm a I'm a professional and life coach um, for entrepreneurs. Sometimes the line between professional and life is non-existent, right? When you are creating your own business, when you're birthing your own business, when you're running your own business, when you're expanding your own business, um, sometimes you are not particularly good at prioritizing yourself. Um, or the, the highs and lows of work, the ebbs and flows of work tend to like bleed in and infest the rest of your life. And so uh, when I talk to women, when I talk to business owners, so often the goals that they are bringing in for themselves to their business or to their personal life also then have this beautiful impact um, with the other realm. So, uh, uh, you know, I when I first started coaching, when I first started training and coaching, I was a little bit like Ugh, about the idea of considering myself a life coach um, because I don't believe that I'm a guru, right? I'm not going to like sell you supplements and beats and stuff like that. And if that's your practice, like more power to you, that's just not my brand. Um, but now I understand how, especially digging deeper than myself, how work can truly impact who you are holistically as a person and impact your entire capital L life. So that's who I am. That's what I do. I love that. And it's so true. And honestly, like there's the saying floating around that I've just been repeating mercilessly. I wish I knew who to credit for it, but yeah, yeah. if you want to go on a journey of self-discovery, start your own business. And yeah. honestly, like, it's so true. That's, it's been so true for me. Like I've learned more about myself. My business is also a pandemic baby. I was just yes. kind of freelancing beforehand, but I've learned more about myself in the last year than I think. And I, I did my previous 30 years of life. Like it was so much like journey to get to this place. Yeah. And that's where the fun is, right? I call that journey or that distance between like where you are today and where you want to be the fun known. And as a cutesy, yes, but it's fine because it makes me happy. But the reason I call it the fun known is because it is meant to be a place of exploration. It is meant to be a place of discovery. It is meant to be a place of adventure. When you are, when you are a business person, you are an entrepreneur, you are a business owner. 
it should be your business, your rules. It doesn't matter what the books say about what is right and what is wrong. That journey is entirely your own. And that's why I call it the fun known. So like your fun known and my fun known have been sort of in tandem with each other. And I'm so glad that we know each other and we get to support each other. Um, I know. I'm so thankful for you. Watching your success has been, has brought me a lot of joy. So Aww. I'm glad that the journey has been rewarding for oh. you. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, you know, and I think a lot of people, you know, obviously if you're, you're scrolling on Instagram and, you know, you're watching us talk right now, like the Instagram feed is not the every day. And I think that like, mm. that's where hashtags like mom boss and like femmepreneur can get like that bad wrap because it's not all just photo shoots and branded clothes. And sometimes it is crying into your pillow because you've been on eight sales calls and you have no new clients. And, oh, you know, there is that up and down. And I, I, I think that everyone, it's like, it's like not everyone's made for entrepreneurship, but the, I think it's something that a lot of people should experience because it really is such a self journey. You learn yeah. so much about yourself and, you know, cause I, I won't lie. There have been times where I've, I've I was like, let me go find a job. Like, let me just find a job. <laughs> and then, but yeah. then I start thinking about it and I'm scrolling through this job description and I'm like, Ooh, that's a no. Mm, that's it. Okay. Well, I guess, you know, I would but prefer have, the pain of this. Have you gotten to the point yet where you're scrolling through those things and you're like, Ooh, gosh, they could really use my services. <laughs> yes. Yes. Especially with, with job descriptions, just cause yeah. I'm hiring. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so there's like some buzzwords that I see a lot and those are immediate red flags to me as a person. And mm -hmm. when I help my, when I help my friends who are still in corporate, like prepare for interviews, I'm like, well, if they say things like fam we're a family. Sometimes it's an indicator that they want you to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And like, mm -hmm. cause families are always available for each other. And like, yeah. you know, like those little red flags. So yeah, I, I love that you brought that up. <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. And it's, I appreciate also this idea of like everybody, everybody should have an opportunity to, to be an entrepreneur. But I think also people are entrepreneurs, whether they are a business owner or not, you are, you are the owner of your own business. You are the owner of your own brand. And so even if you are out in corporate or in federal space or in a nonprofit space or volunteer or whatever it is, right you are still owning your business and owning your bullshit every day. Oh, sorry. Can I, I mean, it's fine. It's on brand for me. So <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. And so, and so just understanding that like you are your business, you bring it to the table every day with you, whether you are signing the paychecks and making the client calls or whether you are on the receiving end of getting a paycheck and a client call, you have something to give. And that journey is very real. You get to determine your life. I like your way of looking at that because I think even more so in the modern age, like you, even if you're in like a nine to five typical yeah. job or something like, like you, you are a brand. And, you know, like I remember my days of like networking on LinkedIn and like mm -hmm. trying to meet the right people to get the right job. Cause it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think even more so nowadays with just how visual everything is. Like I've seen, uh, I'm in Austin, Texas. So we're like the new baby Silicon Valley. And I've seen the job ops and th like, they want your Instagram profile. They want like your Facebook page. Like they want to know about you as a person. And so that's an indication that you are now a personal brand, whether, you know, so I, I agree with that a lot that I think people don't always realize like you are your own brand now. Like it's yeah, <laughs> the way you show up is how you're perceived for sure. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I know that we're a little bit off course from what you really wanted to talk about today, but this is so interesting. Um, I, I think that there's also something to be said for like, when you join a company and they have a social media policy about what you can or cannot talk about, um, either uh, related to the business, or if you are responding to somebody, you cannot say that you are, you know, I work here, but I'm not a representative of this place, but you are, a rep you, you know, it, it gets a little bit murky there. And so, yeah, I understand that the, the company wants to make sure that what you are saying is not in conflict with their values, but then because you are a human, because your values shift, because you evolve, um, you have to keep in mind how the things that become important to you, the things that become priorities to you may no longer be aligned with the business that you are in. I, um, 
I was working uh, many, many years ago um, as a federal employee, and there were some things that I wanted to do and wanted to say as, a, as an individual that I didn't feel comfortable saying as a leader in the federal space. And so yep. I made changes to my life to make sure that I had my voice um, strong and authentic to me. So I, it's all very interesting, this new modern world that we're in. I resonate with that so much. I had the same issue working in the finance space. It's very conservative. Mm. That's where the, the nose ring and the pink hair comes in. Cause I, I liberated yes. myself and I was like, this, this is how I want to show up in the world. And, you know, and like even being, I'm bi and I have a wife and like feeling comfortable even just saying that statement on a yeah. public platform is, is just part of the freedom of being out of that space. Yeah. And it's not that there's necessarily people being like, don't say this specifically, but it's very implied. Oh yes, very much. It's, it's what's not said. That's important. <laughs> so I know we've gotten a little off track, but also yeah, not. No, no, what's back? Yes. this is a great example of what it's like to work with you and how <laughs> you think. So it was all scheduled, you know, totally on plan. <laughs> Yes, very scripted. Next on the agenda. <laughs> I love it. So how does a business owner know that they're ready to bring in like a business coach or a capital mm -hmm. L life coach like yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And it's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is no right answer here. But there are a couple of indicators that you could look for that suggests that maybe it's time for some additional support, right? Because a, a coach isn't going to consult you. They're not going to um, tell you how to do your business. They're not going to fix your business, right? You are your business and you are a perfect entity. Coaching's, uh, coaches are also not therapists, so they're not going to like diagnose you and cure you. Um, although coaching and therapy have a beautiful sort of dynamic partnership within an individual. But you will know that you are ready for a coach when you see where you are today, you see where you want to go, and you don't know how to bridge that gap. You are ready for a business coach when you have your goals, you are on track, but you are not able to, be, to maintain accountability towards yourself. You are not able to hold committed entirely to yourself. You need some external factor to help anchor you towards those goals. I find people also reach out to coaches when they just have this feeling of like, meh right? Like, I feel incomplete. I feel unsatisfied. I'm working so hard. I am running in the hamster wheel and I am getting nowhere. And it is starting to infect all of the other parts of my life. And so I need support in getting focused on where I'm going to get my mojo back to feel like the badass that I know I am in my soul, right? So those tend to be the top three. You don't know how to bridge the gap. You don't know how to be accountable, or you just feel a little bit rudderless or directionless, and you need a little support and a little love getting you back on track, right? Those are the three big, big ways you will know that it's time to bring in a business coach or a capital L life coach. I really like that. And I think that's a good way to answer a question that doesn't have one easy answer. Like, if anyone knows me, I like to come up with those difficult questions that make people no, think. It's, those um, are so challenging. But well, and that's what coaching is about too, right? It is, it is the power of questions. It's asking that question that makes you go, ooh, what a good question. These are my options, right? So good job. You're halfway to being a coach. Thank you. <laughs> I, I honestly saw my favorite moments with uh, the people I've been lucky to be mentored and coached by throughout my career have been those moments where they're like, you know, I'm saying something and all they say is why? And I'm like, that's an easy question. That seems really easy. But now I have to spend a whole week digging through what that even means. And I, yeah. I think it's, it's so profound to really look at someone in that, in that aspect. And I, and that's a very deep relationship that you build when you have a coach, you know, they become, they can become that first person you call when like you have that moment where you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna go on LinkedIn and apply for a job. Like yeah. that's, a reach, that's when you reach out to your coach and you're like, help. Help. <laughs> well, and, and it's so interesting, right? That why question is, is a, um, in my coaching training, we refer to it as a killer question because it can either sort of expand your mindset and allow you to, you know, sort of like meander and explore your motivators and, and, and what informs your motivators and like where you're going, right. It gives you an opportunity to talk it out. That why question is so like your relationship with your coach and your relationship with your mentor is so important in giving them the comfort and the confidence to ask you that question, because why can also make somebody sit back on their heels. It can make them feel defensive. It can make them feel questioned. And so you're absolutely right. Right. 
you need to have that good fit with your coach because it is collaborative. It is a partnership and there is a lot of vulnerability from both sides when you're having those conversations. But yeah, that one why can just really like well, and, the and world it's, of sand. It's similar. Like when you're bringing a strategic partner into your business also, like when I work with people like that, that's why I ask them, are you ready for this? Because it really yeah. is a lot. And, you know, and I, I don't want to force something that's not going to work. And, you know, but it's a give and take, like, I'm not just coming in to fix it. And you can just not tell me things like I need to know what mostly all the things. And, you know, and it's the same way when you're working with a coach, like you don't have to like come to our first call and literally bring up every thought you've ever had, but you need to be open to the fact that it is a two way street to really benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So what, I love it. So what is working with you like for the people watching this on hashtag replay or right now? What, what is working with you look like? Uh, so we start all of my, we, me, I start all of my coaching engagements with a free 50 minute introductory chat. And during that chat, we go through some coaching housekeeping. We start to dig into your goals and it gives you a lot of opportunity to ask me questions back about me, about what it's like to coach with me. Um, because again, collaborative partnership, vulnerability, all of those good things from there. Um, we spend our engagement talking about your goals. I ask a lot of questions. I bring a lot of tough love to the table. I am a very, very good listener. And so I'm going to call you on things that I hear and I'm going to reflect back things. So I'll say something like, um, so what I just heard you say is this, is that what you meant? Right. Um, and while that's a closed, the ball, that's a closed question, right? That is a yes or no answer question. Uh, oftentimes it gives people an opportunity to be like, Oh, that's not exactly what I was going for. Let me try again. Or yes, you got it. That's you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, we, I am very fast. I am very direct. I have a, I am also, um, I come from a place of play. So there is often a lot of humor um, in our conversations too, because if we're going to dig and and work really hard, we might as well have a good time doing it. And my clients will say that working with me is, um, intense, but it is also an experience of, um, feeling supported, feeling like you've got somebody in your corner, feeling like somebody who is going to offer you a big yes to the things that you're worried about, Um, But I'm also somebody who's going to challenge you on those fears and to really uh, ask you to confront in a healthy non-therapy way where those, where those fears and where those stressors are coming from. And if there's ways that you can get ahead of those things um, in order to be strong and just to release your inner badass and dominate your life. Right. So Um, I ask that people, uh, when they first start working with me, have an idea in mind of what's bringing them to coaching. And then we start to narrow down the scope of our conversation from there. Um, By the end of our first conversation, we will have an I want statement. That is our, our sort of like umbrella under which we are going to operate in our coaching relationship. I call it an I want statement because my background is in theater. And if you've ever seen a musical or even if you've seen a Disney princess movie in the first 10 minutes of the film, um, the main character is going to step out and they're going to sing a big song. Like um, I want to be where the people are, or um, Belle, I want adventure in the great white summer, even like um, let it go from frozen. Right. Those are big. I want songs. It's an opportunity for the main character, the hero, you're the hero of your own life, by the way, but the hero to like step forward and say, these are the things that I want and proclaim it. And that moment of proclamation is really scary, but it's also really empowering because now we know what we're rooting for. And now we know what we are driving towards or really what you're driving towards. I'm just asking you questions and like bringing the mixtape and feeding you French fries from the passenger seat on this road trip that we're on together, which is pretty rad. So, um, Uh, so we start with your I want statement and then each subsequent conversation that we have our coaching sessions are about 60 minutes long. Um, and I meet with some folks weekly. I meet with some folks every other week. I meet with some folks, um, once a month. Um, but we really, uh, we start our conversations by what's on your mind or what's a useful place to start today. We get a feel for what does success look like for the end of our time together during that 60 minute period of time. And then it is my responsibility during our conversation to make sure that the things that you were bringing up, the things that you're on your mind and the things that you're working on 
somehow tie back to that bigger goal, right? This contractual obligation that we are in together. Um, I do sometimes ask my clients to uh, take away, I just need to, I call them thought exercises. I need to stop calling that because my, my clients call them homework assignments and they like, they know what I'm doing. They know what it is. I'm like, would you like a thought exercise? And they're like, you mean homework, Carrie? And it's like, <laughs> yes, I mean homework. But, um, but, but these are, th these are activities. These are exercises. So there's things to start putting into practice in your own life, in your business, between our conversations. Um, boy, I just verbal vomited at you. Uh, I love it. I love it. No, I do. I love it. It's, it's resonating with people who are listening too. I, oh, I I'm so glad. That's, that's it's, awesome. I do want to say one other thing though, right? Yeah. Which is a question I get often from interested clients, from people out in the world, which is how do I know that I'm done? How do I know that we've reached the end of our coaching time together? Um, and that is such a great question. That is such a valuable question because so many of my clients, particularly if you're looking for a business coach, you have some end result in mind that you're working towards, right? There's some business goal, there's some client growth goal, there's it, it, work like whatever, whatever your I want statement is, you know where you're going. And so the answer then, if we have done a good job of identifying your I want statement is really easy, which is your I want statement is either in your hands or it is within reach. I recently, and by recently, I mean yesterday, completed a coaching engagement with a person who I started working with in January. Um, and their goal was to feel confident saying that they are an event planner and event coordinator and to have in this new business that they were building their first paid gig. And between January when we started working and yesterday, not only did they grow in confidence because they worked really hard and they committed to themselves and they were accountable to their goals, um, in saying that they're an event coordinator and event planner, they have had three paying gigs and they have four more on the books. Nice. Isn't it That's incredible. unbelievable? And they did this for themselves. They did this for themselves. That's, they needed the support. They committed to themselves. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's just, I was just going to say that that's the power of self-belief, like believing you can do it, visualizing it and moving towards it. Like, yeah, you know, no, no one's going to get there for you. And so no. you no, like I, I love, and I love how you phrase that. Like they did it. Not, yes. not I did it. They did it. I love they that. Did it. Yeah, absolutely. If you come across a coach who's like, I'm going to get you this guaranteed run. Try out different coaches though, because it has to be a good fit. But like, if anybody is guaranteeing you a thing, I would be a little bit suspicious. Um, and also I want my clients to move on. Now I do have some clients where I've been seeing for years and that's amazing because when we get to this point where their I want statement is in reach or they've like sprinted through the finish line of that goal, they're like, cool, this is what I want to work on now, right? They love the coaching. They love their relationship. They love what they get out of it. But I get so excited when a client, like my client yesterday, is like, I did it. I'm ready to go out on my own. I want them to go out on their own. I want to celebrate with them. I want to watch their growth. I want to watch as they continue to like expand in their life and fulfill these other things for themselves because they hit this milestone. I want them to go. I want them to celebrate. I want them to share back with me. Um, and I'm always here when they want to come back, if they want to come back. Um, but there's a feeling and our success measures should be pretty indicative of knowing when you're done or knowing when you're close to being done. I like that you share. Thank you for sharing that with us. It's, I Welcome. think it's something that can be nerve wracking when you're selecting a coach is like, well, is this, am I paying this forever until the end of time? Like what, is, what does the end look like? And mm -hmm. I think begin, beginning with the end in mind. <laughs> yes, you have to begin with the end in mind. <laughs> My, my, my kids' schools have been very big on those, like, mm. steps. It's, it's in, in my head now, too. Begin mm. with the end in mind. And yeah. you know, really going down that path with someone who understands that. And, you know, I love that you hold your clients accountable. So, because I will say, like, for me, it's always a relief if I get to show up to a call and I'm not in charge of organizing it. Like, that alone <laughs> is amazing. And getting to show up and, like, just kind of talk and have someone who's guiding me, but I don't have to be thinking about, okay, well, is that tied to that? I'd be like, here's my thought. And then, yeah. you know, how do you yeah. bring it back to where it needs to be?
Yeah, there's this beautiful, I think it's like one of those very silly um, inspiration posters, you know, like of the variety of like the cat hanging on a tree and it's like yeah. hanging there. But there's one that I really like that's like a person jumping off a, actually, if you like look at my Instagram feed, it's like all the way down. It's the very first post I ever posted. It's this picture of like a person like, like me, like jumping off the edge of, of like one rock to another one. And it says beneath it, like leap and the net will appear. And I think so often um, that entering into a coaching relationship with someone is taking that leap and trusting that they as the net will appear to support you if you are to fall. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This has been so fun and so <laughs> good. I just want to keep talking all day long. Oh yeah, we can uh, totally keep talking. We can totally keep talking. Absolutely. <laughs> I also, I just want to say, I love this series. I have watched oh, also you. replay uh, the couple of other conversations that you had. I, you have, is this it? Am I it? No, there's a couple more coming. Okay, good. I, because I was like, I know it was May, but I don't know. But I, I appreciate that you were sharing this platform with other people to help your clients and your followers know when. Because, oh, yeah, because it's the knowing when that is sometimes, particularly if you are ambitious and you, you feel like you need to do it all by yourself, you don't know when to reach out. And so you're giving people permission to do that. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, and it's also been very informative for me. So I have learned a that's lot. Good. That's good to hear. That's, that's why I created it. Like a lot of times when I help someone in their business and like, they don't know what they, they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And how do you, like, if you don't understand what a business coach does or what a bookkeeper does or what a social media manager does, then how do you know when you need one? Mm -hmm. And so I picked some amazing people in my network to, to come in and really talk about what, you know, what Pinterest is and why you need it and what working with someone like that looks like. Cause you know, it, it's that fear, the fear of the unknown. Yeah, that keeps, it is. That keeps people from doing things when they need to. And I see, I see that often, like a lot when hiring is they, they either it's all one big role or it's just, I don't even know what I need. And, yeah. you know, I wanted to bridge that gap for people in, in a, a way that also allows other amazing business owners to really talk about what they do. And you're not hearing it from me. I'm not, I don't want to explain what you do. I want you to explain what you do. There's something also about when you own a business and it is your baby. And I have felt this very dynamically over this last year when I have started to bring, it was terrible syntax, but like when I start, I have started like bringing other people in to help me grow, to help me do things better, to help me get towards where I'm growing my business too. There is a moment where you need to say like, I am going to share this space with you and trust that this thing that I have been like willing into existence and willing towards success with like spit willpower and duct tape, that you are going to treat it as though it is your own. And together it is now our shared responsibility, right? So, so there is that leap of faith, that trust, that vulnerability that comes into play, but also knowing that there's the bookkeepers and the copywriters and the social media managers and the business coaches we get to share that responsibility and we get to share that weight. So that way you as the business owner can focus on doing what you are most passionate about, which is your business. Exactly. We get the other stuff out of the way so you can focus on joining. So and thank it, you. Thank you. It never hurts to have more people in your corner who are cheering mm -hmm. for you. And you know, really that's what growing a business is about is finding those people who you guys vibe really well. There's a value align and you know, you guys are traveling the same path in different ways because yeah. that's what you need. You need someone who can bring something other than what you have. And it's funny that you bring up the baby. Cause that's when I first started in the space, that's what I said on all my discovery calls. I was like, I know your business is your baby. And as a mother, I understand how scary it is to hand your baby to a stranger on the internet. Mm. And if you think about it, that's really what we're doing. And I understand that. And, you know, there's a process as a business owner to really be ready to step yeah. into that. And that's why we're a part of what I want to address in this series too, is like, you're never ready. Like, it's like when you send your kid to kindergarten, you are never ready to walk away. Even if you want to go drink mimosas and sit in a pool at 10am, like you're still not really ready to like yeah. let go. And your first hire is going to be very influential for you as a business owner and it, it makes a big impact on what you're doing so making sure that you're bringing the right person in at the right time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly exactly
Well, on behalf of all of the business owners, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. And I am so happy that you're here with us. This will live on the feed. So if you're catching the replay and you have questions for Carrie and I, please comment below. Yeah. But I appreciate your time and we will talk soon. Have a great one. Stay healthy in, in Texas. Oh, stay cool also. Yes, cool. That's important. <laughs> Bye. Bye.